Hello and welcome to Yesterday's Airlines. Once again, I am here to talk about a new release announcement and it is Gemini Jet's October releases that have just dropped a few days ago. Now, you may have been caught up in the wishing that's going on over at the NG Models site um, and looking at the future releases that are being voted for by you, the collector. And that is about as far away from the dynamic that Gemini put out as possible. So Gemini's release sets typically are incredibly conservative and very similar month on month. Having said that, last month, the Gemini release set actually scored surprisingly well. And there were a couple of supersonics and four high flyers. So that's more than half of the releases got into high flyer and supersonic. Now, obviously, lots of people got very upset that I put that Trump Vance wreck into scrap metal. But... Yeah, I'm not going to go there again, really. Don't care. But the rest of the models scored pretty well. And when you look through the pictures that Gemini have released, as always, which come with the caveat that Gemini's release shots actively hide the subject matter, the models actually look like they turned out, again, pretty well. Certainly the Allegiant um, Max and that Delta MD80 both look pretty solid. In fact, it's an MD90, is it? Apologies. Um, look pretty solid um, and some of the other models look okay as well um, the Qantas um, A220 and even surprisingly actually that Trump Vance jet uh, I saw some pictures of that on Facebook and the model looked surprisingly good considering the weakness of the mold it looked like um, they've done a much better job of putting it together and the mold can look passable if it's properly polished and the wings are attached properly and so on. Um, it doesn't change the subject matter, but the mold actually looked better. So the release model looked better than I thought it would look. Um, so it was, a, it was a fine month, you know, um, and there were some decent models. I'm not entirely convinced by the United 757 in terms of where the cockpit windows are placed and obviously the mold has some other weaknesses, but Again, it's, it's solid, it's reliable, it's nothing special, but it's not bad. Okay, so into this month, what is it that Gemini have got on offer for us? Well, that's what we're going to be looking at. In a few seconds, I'll be ranking those releases. Before I do that, as always, chuck a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done that. And check me out on Instagram, at Yester Airlines and Facebook and yesterdaysairlines.com, the website. Uh, so I've been producing a lot of content um, for nearly 10 years now, and there's a huge amount of material there discussing the scale and the releases and so on and so forth. So let's get on without further ado and see what Gemini are giving us for October. So for October, Gemini are actually producing a relatively small batch of models. There are eight civilian aircraft and a single military max release. So not a large month even for Gemini and obviously they never produce a large number of models in 400 scale. Anyway, another interesting point about this month is the lack of Boeing material, there is not a single Boeing release in this set, which is again highly unusual for Gemini. But that doesn't mean the set isn't incredibly familiar. And when you look through the airlines in here, it's just the standard airlines that you always get from Gemini Jets, America, Delta, Emirates, Hawaiian, JetBlue, Lufthansa. The only one probably missing is United. <laughs> so it's the same airlines. And therefore, it's not enormously surprising. We're going to start in those Airbus narrowbodies, three of which are Airbus A321s. And the first one up is another American retro jet. It's the America West heritage scheme wearing the Jumanji style colours, as I believe they're called, from America West in the 90s. So... This is the fourth of these that they've released in recent times. They've already produced the PSA, the Piedmont, and the Allegheny versions. Oh, it's Piedmont, isn't it? Oh, 
never mind. And <laughs> this is the fourth, so the America West. It was inevitable it was going to come out. I think that they'd already talked about it being a future release, so it's not a surprise at all. The previous three looked pretty decent, I guess, but unspectacular. The Gemini A321 mold, it's perfectly ordinary. This model, N580 Uniform Whiskey, has been made already and relatively recently also by Aero Classics. They made a version and their one looked, yeah, it looked pretty mediocre to be honest. But it doesn't mean necessarily that this one is going to be dramatically better. I think it will be better than the Aero Classics because Gemini will get the colours better and they've got a better set of undercarriage for the A321 and obviously they've got aerials too, so they've got those things. I think it will be a better release than the Aero Classics. But fundamentally, it's a pretty ordinary A321 model. I'm just going to put this one in to workhorse. The next two A321s are both Neos, and that means you've got to contend with those enormous vacuum cleaner, hoovering, sucking engines that are right on the ground. The first one up is Hawaiian Airlines N208 Hotel Alpha, and yeah, this is such a Gemini release that it is indeed the fourth. Um, A321 Neo that they have produced. They've already produced N202, N204, and N205 spread across the years 2018, 2019, and 2021. So it's been a few years since they put one of these out, but it really wouldn't surprise me if this one was made at the same time as the last one from 2021. Looking at the pictures of these, yeah, they, they could be worse. <laughs> it's kind of damning with faint praise. They're not shockingly awful but the last one was still not great the engines look pretty awful i'm not sure about the cockpit printing on this one i have to say the last release the n205 ha either and as is often the case with their a321s they just look a little bit yeah a little bit ordinary not particularly good I'm going to actually put this one down in gas guzzler, liver, partly because the mould is so weak and partly because they've made it three times already. There's just nothing going on here. And I would expect this model to get made by NG at some point in the near future. In fact, I believe it is one of the ones which is scoring quite well in their wish list. So it probably will get made by them and obviously it will be a lot better. The next model up is also a 321 Neo, but this one is from the Tanza. The registration is D Alpha India Echo Quebec, and that means it is the 600th Airbus aircraft scheme, which basically is a standard Lufthansa A321 with these big 600 titles on the front of it. So the scheme isn't particularly exciting. It has been made recently by Phoenix Models, so they produced a version of this, which you know, looks okay, but again, they're A321, a little bit mediocre around the nose. It didn't look dreadful though, I have to say, but it's not spectacularly good either. This one will be in that similar vein, but for different reasons, I would say. Again, I'd be surprised if this didn't get made by somebody else. Lufthansa release is common as muck. There are so many of them that it's bound to get made by someone else soonish, one would expect. This one has the potential to be better, I think, than the Hawaiian. I think this one will be a like a very more recent 321 Neo, and the recent Neos they've been making have looked better than the older versions, so it has the potential to be nicer than some of the earlier Neos that have been made by Gemini. It also hasn't been made before except by, by Phoenix that one time. So I'll put this one up into Workhorse rather than Gas Guzzler. It might be slightly nicer than the Hawaiian and at least it hasn't been made four times before. Next model is into the Airbus wide bodies, and it is another, you know, just kind of shelf filling release. It's a Delta A330, 300 N829 November whiskey. Once again, this is a really stock, ordinary Gemini release. They've made a Delta A330 300 wearing this scheme four times previously. They made it in 2009, 2014, 2015, and 2018. Two of those are on the old mold and two of them are on the newer JC Wings mold. 
the new mould is, is okay. It's a slot in wings, but it's inferior to the Phoenix mould, the NG mould. is isn't great. Um, it's very ordinary. And NG also made uh, a Delta A33300 in July 21. So there are plenty of these floating around the market. This one should not be particularly different, better or worse, than the previous two that they made on the same mould. It's going to be very, very ordinary. And if you don't have a Delta A330 by now and you collect Delta models, I'd be surprised. So I'm going to put this one to work horse. It's, yeah, just a meh kind of model. Now the next model up is a little bit unusual in that it's a little unclear what it is. It's going to be registered A6 Echo Oscar Delta. It's an Emirates A380. So that's going to gladden your heart. But it's unclear what livery it's going to wear. So presumably... Emirates got a, yet another special scheme coming up for one of the A380s and this model is going to be the one wearing it but we're not entirely certain what it is yet. That makes it a little hard to score. Or does it? I mean, they produce so many Emirates A380s and let's be honest, they all look pretty ordinary. Because the mould isn't very good. So I don't think there's a lot of discussion required around this. If you're looking at A380s nowadays, then really, you know, definitely should be angling for the Aviation 400 version and they have made an Emirates at least one um, and if not the fallback is the Phoenix it certainly isn't this Gemini JC A380 so I'm going to put this one down in to Gas Guzzler as well. That leaves us just three models to talk about in the civilian area and fortunately those three models are a lot more interesting than the ones that have come before. Uh, they all represent regional types, albeit quite large regional types, and those areas where Gemini really does have an opportunity to shine because there's not a lot of competition. The first one up is a Delta Connection um, CRJ900. I think it's operated by SkyWest. It's N806SK. And it's wearing the Colors in Motion scheme from the early 2000s. They haven't made um, a CRJ900 in this scheme. They have made 19 other CRJ900s. Um, and some of those have been Delta. But they've never, as far as I can see, um, been in the Colors in Motion scheme. Most of them have been in the modern scheme when they have made them. Obviously, there have been these issues around undercarriage being stuck on the right way around and all that stuff and who knows whether it's going to be in this case hard to say um, let's just assume that it is and if it is then this should be a pretty good looking model and one which you know is giving me a little bit of interest I have to say it's a little bit too new I think for my Delta fleet but I like the concept of it should be nice looking at pictures of the last release, um, it came out quite well. Um, the nose gear is tiny on these little CRJ900s, which doesn't look spectacular, but the rest of the model is good. It's a good mold. So I'm going to put this one up into High Flyer, I think. I think this is um, a worthy and interesting release. Should be really popular, I would imagine, as well. The next release is another larger regional jet. This one is... The, an Embraer 190, it's in the colours of Jet Blue, N323 uh, Juliet Bravo. And this is the third time that Gemini have released a Jet Blue E190, but they've all been in different schemes. Um, in 2016, they made Blue Bonnet. In 2017, they made what I'm wearing, the Blueprint scheme. Um, and this one is in a different tail version. Um, and I think it's called Only Blue, the aircraft should be nice. Once again, it's a good, maybe not spectacular, but it's a decent mould. Um, it holds up reasonably well. When you look at older E190 releases, yeah, they look okay. Sometimes the engines aren't attached properly. There are some issues around the wing. The nose and, and uh, um, positioning of the landing gear, the nose gear, is yeah, it's not great. I mean, but 
at the same time as an overall package I don't have dramatic issues with it I got the E190 not long ago that was made in the colors of Virgin Blue and I hope to get the Pacific Blue one which um, both those made by JC Wings and they're perfectly nice little models so again I think I'll put this one in the high flyer the mold isn't spectacular like I say but it's a perfectly decent choice and it's an area where no one else is going to be producing a competitive um, model because nobody else has that E190 mold. The last of the civil releases this month is a Dash 8 Q400. It's in the colours of Widero of Norway. LN Whiskey Delta Mike is the registration. It's wearing their new scheme, which is actually a bit blander than the one they had before, to be honest, because they've got rid of all the paint on the fuselage and gone completely Euro white. I was in Bergen recently and I saw some of these, quite a few of these Dash 8 Q400s, both in the old and the new scheme. So that makes me like this release more, I think, than I would have before. They have made the old version of a Widero um, Dash AQ400, but they made it a long, long time ago. So it isn't completely unique in terms of the airline, but they have never made this new livery before. So that is cool. And it's hopefully going to be a, a good selling model for them I have to say um, I think that it's good to see something slightly more unusual though to be honest um, since they made it before it's not exactly the sort of airline they'd never make <laughs> um, the last one I saw was 10 years ago in 2014 so it was a long time ago they made it but um, yeah this one should be good now they've been making a few more key 400s recently um they and they manned chasey wings um chasey released a, an a and a wings one uh in september and gemini put out a porter release in july when it comes to the mold it's an excellent mold except there are some concerns about the nose gear um Sometimes nowadays it's higher and gives the aircraft a slightly oddly nose high look to it, which is not correct for a Dash 8. So a few concerns there, but overall I think this is going to be a nice release and it did look like the previous Porter version came out quite well with some really nice detailing, especially around the engines. So I'm going to put this one up into Supersonic. This for me is the best release of the month. But all three of those regional aircraft this month are pretty good. Last model to discuss is a Max release. Now I'm getting much more into Max releases recently, much more interested in military releases, and I don't have any C5 Galaxies in my collection as of yet. This one is, as always for a C5, a US Air Force. Um, 85-0009 is the reg, and it's from Lackland Air Force Base in Texas. Now, they've made quite a few C9, uh, C5s, sorry, and they have indeed made one from Lackland Air Force Base before. They made one in 2019. From the pictures, it looks effectively the same. So, there's not a lot to say here. The, the mold looks good. Um, from the little I've seen of it, I did have it in hand um, at Manchester Show recently, so I did get to see one. They've made a lot of C5s, and no doubt they will continue to make them. This is, I think, the uh, it's in the mid-20s in terms of the number they made but the air the liveries obviously of all these modern c5s are very very similar with just the tails um, having a slightly different um, coloring but this one looks pretty much the same as the previous Lackland Air Force Base c5 that they produced so I'm gonna put this one into workhorse um, for that reason okay well that's my roundup of October's releases from Gemini it is Pretty ordinary as a release set goes. Um, the Airbus material is almost completely lacking in interest, in my opinion. But the regional jets are good and should be nice models. And then you've got, a, again, a fairly run-of-the-mill Max release on the back end. Inoffensive, but also not particularly interesting, <laughs> would be my kind of summary of this release set. Which you could say... 
for a lot of what Gemini put out. They still seem to sell, so um, there's obviously a market for this, but it isn't one that I'm particularly interested in. And when you compare it to what some manufacturers are producing at the moment, like Phoenix, then you know it's chalk and cheese in terms of the diversity and the interest factor. Okay, no, well, that's it for this video. Hope you've enjoyed watching, and thank you very much. I will see you next time. But that's it from me at Yes Airlines, signing off. Bye-bye.